In this MedMastery lesson, I will introduce the common clinical presentations of infective endocarditis, including fever, heart murmur, anemia, embolic phenomena like petechiae and large vessel occlusion, and metastatic infections. More serious manifestations include valvular obstruction, myocardial abscess, or mycotic aneurysm. Low virulence organisms are usually associated with nonspecific symptoms like fever, malaise, anorexia, myalgia, and arthralgia. Four mechanisms may be involved in the clinical manifestations of infective endocarditis. Number one, infection of the involved heart valve. Number two, embolization of vegetations to the systemic circulation or the lungs. Number three, metastatic infection. And number four, deposition of abnormal globulins and immune complexes at various sites remote from the heart. We'll focus on the first mechanism for the rest of this lesson. When an infection has been present on a heart valve for weeks, symptoms will include dyspnea, precordial discomfort, and palpitations. When valve dysfunction is severe enough, it will cause the signs and symptoms of congestive heart failure, such as peripheral edema. This presentation would be most common with low virulence organisms, such as alpha streptococci. In patients with implantable cardiac devices, the presentation of endocarditis is usually subacute, but occasionally patients present more acutely with sepsis and shock. The acute presentations are associated with more virulent organisms like Staph aureus. Let's talk about auscultation of infected heart valves. Heart murmurs are often depicted as a sound wave that occurs in relation to the two heart sounds, S1 and S2. In patients who have a history of a murmur, the murmur ordinarily does not change when it is caused by low virulence organisms. However, a changing murmur is characteristic if infective endocarditis is caused by an invasive organism like Staph aureus. The changing murmur is usually due to valve destruction. Such patients would likely be acutely ill as well. Note that no heart murmur should be considered innocent when infective endocarditis is a diagnostic consideration. Heart murmurs may be absent in up to one-third of patients with infections involving the left side of the heart. If mitral valve dysfunction is present before or after infective endocarditis develops, the incompetent mitral valve will allow blood to pass retrograde into the left atrium during systole. The characteristic murmur of mitral regurgitation is constant in intensity, blowing, and high-pitched. It is loudest at the apex with radiation into the axilla and left infrascapular region. It is diminished by sudden standing. If aortic valve dysfunction is present before or after infective endocarditis develops, the incompetent aortic valve will allow blood to pass retrograde into the left ventricle during diastole. The murmur of aortic regurgitation is a high-frequency murmur which begins immediately after S2. It is best heard while the patient is sitting upright leaning forward and holding their breath in deep expiration. It has an early peak followed by a decrescendo pattern. The longer the duration of the murmur, the more severe the aortic regurgitation. When severe enough, the murmur may be accompanied by a late diastolic rumbling murmur, the Austin Flint murmur. It is caused by a heavy jet of aortic regurgitation impinging on the anterior leaflet of the mitral valve, causing narrowing of the valve. If tricuspid valve dysfunction is present before or after infective endocarditis develops, the incompetent tricuspid valve will allow blood to pass retrograde into the right atrium during systole. 
the holosystolic murmur of tricuspid regurgitation is high-pitched and loudest in the fourth intercostal space parasternally or occasionally in the subxiphoid area. In acute tricuspid regurgitation, the murmur is usually of low intensity and limited to the first half of systole. It is usually increased during inspiration and decreased by standing and with the Valsalva maneuver. If aortic stenosis was present before infective endocarditis develops, the stenotic valve would decrease the blood flow into the aorta. The murmur of aortic stenosis produces a mid-systolic, harsh and rasping crescendo-decrescendo murmur best heard at the second right intercostal space with radiation into the carotid artery. Squatting or lying flat will make this murmur louder. One surprising fact about infective endocarditis is that heart murmurs are often absent or not appreciated by examiners. Continue to the next med mastery lesson to learn about the other three mechanisms involved in the clinical manifestations of infective endocarditis. So I hope you like this video absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how MetMastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About MetMastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.